to the vaults of YouTube. It's me again, your Palinani, back at you with some Victoria 2. It's been quite a while since uh, I've last presented a video for you. I hope in the meantime you haven't been slacking off on your duties. World conquest doesn't come easy, you know. So, you might be wondering yourself, Kaiser Nani, you suave, glorious stud who's also great in battle and in bed, ladies. Why are we looking at this map again? I thought we were done with Victoria too. Well, the simple answer is this. I decided that I wasn't quite content with my older series, and I wanted to give this another run down. You see, quite a bit has happened in Victoria 2 since I started. It's especially noticeable in the earlier episodes um, that a lot of the information just simply isn't true anymore. So, giving it a fresh start now that we're basically at the final patch, and especially including some accoutrement to modding, because unlike when I started, the mod scene for Victoria 2 is huge. I would say maybe half the population who playing this game are going to be using some kind of mod. I will also include some tidbits for that. So, first things first, let's talk about one of the most important things of Victoria 2, selecting your country. I've written an entire guide about which country you should start with in Victoria 2, and though I made that for an older version of the game, much of it still stands up. So, I'm going to make this a quick rundown of countries you should probably not pick for your first game in Victoria 2. You might think that with the Queen Victoria thing going on and all, that the United Kingdom would be an obvious choice, but there is quite a lot to deal with as being the United Kingdom, and it can be really overwhelming for a brand new player. Um, you know, there's quite a lot to deal with militarily, you have to deal with technology, you have to deal with events, all kinds of stuff, and you might not even want to do a lot of those things, so... Starting out with the UK, not exactly a great choice. Russia is huge. It's dauntingly huge, and unless you're kind of an expert on Russian city names, it can be often quite difficult to determine where exactly things are when they pop up an event and other important tidbits of information like that. It should be telling that even I don't really like to play the Russian Empire too much, because there's just so much to deal with because of your giant, contiguous landmass that at times it does get pretty difficult to uh, manage. The Empire of China, uh, or the Chinese Empire, either one works. You could even call them the Qing Dynasty, because um, that's really what they were called. Um, very, very, very difficult nation to play as, probably the hardest in the game, and a lot of people might be attracted to China as a whole, as a country in this time period, but just trust me, stay out of it until you have some, at least a little bit of experience. There is a lot and you might get swamped quickly. And you probably don't want to get really swamped and really unhappy with your very first game, because that can turn you off a project forever. So with that being said, let's pick a country. I want to play the Ottoman Empire today, and get right into things. So one of the first things to note is that your map in game is not very helpful right now. You probably want to click this little button here, political map mode, so you can actually see where the borders of the countries run and everybody's territory and whatnot. Now, if you pick maybe a more obscure country like, say, Abu Dhabi to start with, or maybe Sindh, and neither are great choices, I will warn you, um, but I guess they are playable enough. If you pick a country like that at start and you're not a huge history buff and you don't really know maybe exactly where your country is at all time, one helpful thing Open this up here and click on one of your armies. Since you're generally going to have at least one army within your territory at all times, or at the very least one of your navies, you will quickly be able to see exactly where you are in the world and position your attack as it goes. So, with uh, where you are now being completely established, let's talk about some of the more basic functions and commands of the game. Now. Obviously, the first thing you should be acquainted with in Victoria 2 is the most basic controls. For most, that's going to be your. For the most part, that's going to be your units. You can uh, direct left click or click and drag to select multiple. You're going to need to do that to com to combine uh, armies or fleets. And uh, right click will move them around. Unless you're a big Civ 5 buff, I probably don't have to tell you this, but obviously armies cannot walk on water, there will be no religions founded here today, and ships 
Well, they can sail to ports, but they don't do anything there. They are only active at sea. So, with that being said, with the controls now established, let's get squared away something very important in Victoria 2, which is familiarity with the HUD overall. So first things first up here, we've got production. Now, earlier on, you're not going to be worrying too much about this, as several countries, the industry just simply runs themselves, or it really never becomes uh, an issue at all. Though, if you notice some flashing lights up here, you know, it might be good to check. Now, this is going to be where all of your factories are. And, of course, uh, you also have some tabs here, like foreign investment, which lets you invest in other countries, outright production, which shows you everything your country is making, and projects, which is what capitalists make. Now, as I said, I'm not going to go into much detail on this because I could do a whole episode about it, and I will. So, for the most part, let this run itself, but if, if things are demanding your attention, take a, take a look in here. For now, just be aware that this exists. Here's the budget. Budget's very important in Victoria 2. Now, the thing with money in Vic 2 is that it's always important to have it. Basically, you don't have to, you don't need a million billion dollars. There's not very much in the game, especially the base game, to spend on. Simple as that. But the important thing is that you're never out, because bankruptcy, there's not really a way to outright lose uh, in Victoria 2, short of being completely annexed. But if there was, bankruptcy would be, be close to that. It completely ruins your country, and it would take so long to get back on track that, let's just say, it's not going to happen in the game. Now, I'll go over more of these uh, as it stands later. Um, but for now, I'll just keep it simple. If you need more money, increase your taxes, increase your tariffs, lower your spending. All these things will have consequences, so don't just, you know, oh, excuse me, don't just do the base Victoria 2 thing of just maxing out all of your uh, sliders for taxes and tariffs because it will have a detrimental effect on your population and your economy. This goes double for mods where they are a lot harsher about this sort of thing. Still, um, it's better to have a couple of years with a low slider than it is to be in bankruptcy, so always, always remember your options for this. Technology is very important, and again, I will do a, uh, an episode on this at a later date. But for now, all you need to know is that you should always generally be researching something. Those more historically savvy out there may be more well aware of technologies that would be good for their specific countries. For instance, since the Ottoman Empire could be expected to fight quite a few wars, the military staff system here in the army section would be a very good investment, whereas something like romanticism, maybe not so much. Um, again, you generally want to be researching technologies. And again, I'm not going to give you too many spoilers as to uh, the biggest and best technologies in this episode, but let's just say philosophy line, light armament, ship construction, and political thought. And leave it at that. A lot of people also think uh, this, t this tag line is pretty important, but mm, I guess. Specifically this invention here. So you can basically stop there. But, I don't know. I, I feel like it's nice and all. But I feel like the other tech trees are more important. But again, that's a story for another time. In the politics sections, we can see our parties, potential reforms to do. If you're an uncivilized nation, this will be very important for you. Though you probably shouldn't kick off with one of those. Movements show you what your people want as a whole and show you any rebellions that might be popping up. Decisions are your effective objectives, and what you should be aiming for generally, because they will universally almost have a positive uh, effect. Except for anything that gives you this little modifier here, confusion. Um, you probably don't want to generally be do messing with that very much until you really know what you're doing. Release nations lets you release nations. You can't do it at war. So I can't do it right now, but 
You can release them as puppet states, or you can release them fully and play as them. If you've ever seen a, uh, let's play a Victoria 2 or something, where somebody starts a game in 1930, or 1836, not being a very long game, they started in 1936, they started a game in 1836 playing as Ukraine, or, uh, Hungary, that's how they did it. Trade section shows you what you're buying, what you're selling, and what everybody is buying and selling between your population, between the world market, and between all of that. Again, like production, I'm going to go into this uh, in a future episode more, but for now, I'll say this much. If there's any screen that really, really runs itself that you almost are never going to be dealing with, it's probably this one. The AI is really good at determining what you need because it always buys what you need and, you know, always sells what you don't. The only time you're really going to be doing anything here is if you're buying in bulk before you think something happens, and that's such a keynote, minor thing that... Uh, I'll, I'll just be real here. I don't use this screen very often. I might check it twice a game, and I might just look at, you know, this to see, wow, like, I'm really cool because I'm making, uh... Let's see, what are we making? It's running a lot of wool. So let's see. Yeah, I'm second place for wool production, guys. I'm really cool. That's it. Diplomacy is one of your more important screens. This will let you uh, conduct, unsurprisingly, diplomacy with other nations. By default, you can get a view of the eight great powers, um, which are your four most countries that have special perks and benefits that other countries don't get. Uh, you can also check out any wars that are currently in progress, and see war justifications that you know about. War justification is a very important mechanic that I didn't really get to talk about last time because I never really did much with A House Divided or uh, Heart of Darkness, so this will be covered in future episodes, but just know that to uh, declare war, you need a justification. Let's see if we can justify on somebody right now. Great. Obviously, you probably don't want to be picking a fight with Austria at this point in the game, but, you know, that will, that just shows you that's one of the most basic things you can do here. Um, there's also the Sphere of Influence bar, which we'll talk about when we go more to this tab. Um, spoilers, by the way, basically every tab except uh, Trade is going to get its own episode. That's probably going with Reduction. Um, so, if you need to declare a war, you do that. Unless you already can declare a war. Let's see if we can. Answer is yes, right on Egypt. Or you hit this button, yet you ask for what you want, and you have proceed to actually declare the war. I'm not going to do that right now, because I don't really want to fight Egypt while I'm already dealing with tripling. Finally, there's a military tab. Well, you can do well. You can do basically everything here except for create a general and mobilize on the base map. It's an important thing to see. Perhaps your most important tab overall, as most nations. Here you can build uh, units of varying description, which is very important if you want to actually ever win wars, and uh, as well as naval ships. So I would basically always just be building ships from provinces so you can see where your docks are. You can also mobilize, which will uh, bring up your citizens to become untrained conscripts within your army, which is good if you're uh, going up against somebody with a more sizable military than you and you just need something to um, defend yourself with. So with all that being said, I'm going to give you my advice for what you should do on your first day in Victoria 2, because your first day is a very important one. Now, first things first, you might see this up here in our population tab. Oh, I forgot to mention the population tab. That's a perfect excuse. Population tab shows your population, and it's so irrelevant in most cases that I forget it exists. The only time I check it is if I'm trying to find a region that's really big to put a national focus in. There we go. Now, you might have noticed this little number right below the population tab. This is our maximum number of national focuses, and this is a very important system. If you don't know what you're doing with national focuses, especially on the first day, I would just find the most populated po uh, region, or just a region you think is going to be important, like your capital, and start making soldiers in it. Some countries only start with one national focus, so if you can't do two like I just did, well, that's why. We'll be going over uh, national focuses more later. Technology. 
you probably want to be researching something on day one. Research something that you have the least of. You can check uh, budget and military, and obviously you're standing in the world with your score up here to see what you need the most of. For instance, we're doing terrible on the industrial power score, having no factories in the entire nation. Our budget's not great, and our military is kind of lackluster. But since we're needing, you know, we need military presciently, since we have Tripoli we're going after and Egypt is next, military staff system would be a good first technology. Again, if you're confused on this, I will soon upload a new technology video explaining some good first techs, some good techs for certain nations, so on and so forth. Um, in the meantime, you can check out the old version of the video, but be forewarned, that was a couple of years ago and not all the information will be in date. Of course, one other thing to note is that um, if your nation starts at war and in 1836, which is as a new player, the only scenario you really should play at all, the only countries that start in a war are the Ottoman Empire and Tripoli versus Mexico and Tex- er, Ottoman Empire versus Tripoli and Mexico versus Texas. So you'll very seldom need to worry about that. Finally, try to balance your budget as much as you can. Many countries will be in the red no matter what they do at the very start of the game, um, especially in poor parts of the world like India and Latin America. So sometimes you just can't help being in the red, but try to remove the burden as much as possible. Military spending may be one of the more important, and national stockpile as well, two of the more important uh, factors, so if you're going to cut from spending, try to do them last. Or Avoid it if you can help it. And with your ba with your budget vaguely balanced, we're now aces for playing the game. So with all that being said, if you've picked a success a sufficiently good nation for starting with, and everything is in line, you are now equipped to start your very first game of Victoria 2. If you do, I wish you luck. And if you want to, uh check out some more videos for more tips on what to do, then, well, that's fine as well. So, I'm proud to say that we are successfully ending a broadcast for the first time in years, and I will see you next video. Good night, folks.